reiterate what Honourable Member for Batukawa has said the MACC revealed the estimated loss of revenue to state government is 100 million. And yet, I mentioned before, our second Minister for Resource and Planning and Environment claimed in 2010 that the loss suffered by the illegal logging is still very minimal, which stood at 0.01% of the 731 million in revenue collected from timber taxes and royalty, i.e., the loss of revenue to the government due to illegal logging is as low as 73,100. Recently, the minister also claimed that those involved in illegal logging are only a small group. All this while, it is disappointed to see that there are still people in the BN government who try to downplay the seriousness of the timber theft. We welcome the whole idea of tightening the forest bill with heavier penalty and fine for all types of offences as prescribed in part five, uh, part six of the bill. But I must say that if the enforcement officers include the forest officers or the police officers fail their duties as prescribed under the law, the forest bill 2015, once it is passed, will be as good as a redundant law. To protect our state timber resources from robbers and thieves, it is indeed important that the enforcement <coughs> officers are clean and not to get themselves tainted with corruption or practice double standard when it comes to eliminating the timber theft. Actions must be taken, be it commit by key industry players or small timber licensees. Lately, I have frequently read news on seizure of illegal logs after the young Ahmad Bahamad chief minister repeatedly voices his discontentment on the issue. What puzzled me is that there were always photos with all sorts of sizes of timber, timber logs, at times with heavy machinery seized and smiling enforcement officers standing proudly next to the seized logs. Don't speak up, but strangely, I hardly see any handcuffed suspected, suspects arrested. How can that be? There's no arrest, no arrest of suspects most of the time. It makes me wonder, one speaker, may I ask, do the enforcement officers play their sirens while driving to the jungles or the log ponds, or were these thieves forewarned? Do you think that is possible? Let me tell you, thieves from outside is bad, but thieves within is far more dangerous. As informed by the Forestry Department in the press recently that the seized illegal logs which are not owned up by anyone, are to be handed over to Howard Timber Sandrian Brahat, a wholly owned subsidiary of STIDC, to be disposed of. Howard Timber was in fact set up to keep track on the distribution and on endorsement of locks in the state. What have Howard Timber been doing since its establishment in monitoring the lots until illegal loggings has gone so rampant? The royalties collected from the disposal of confiscated logs will be paid off, paid off to the state coffer. My question is, why is the proceeds of sales from the disposal of seized logs are not paid to the state coffer, but to Howard Timber's account? Howard Timber has failed so miserably in the entrusted responsibility given by the government, and how can we continue to trust Howard Timber further? Legally speaking, all proceeds of sales from the tender of confiscated lots should be paid to the state consolidated funds and not to Howard Timber's account. We have a situation whereby the enforcement task is carried out by the forest officer or the forest or the police officers, but the money collected from the sales of the seized illegal lots are to be paid to Howard Timber. And it is Howard Timber that gets the entire windfall. It is very wrong for Howard to keep the sales money. How can the money which belongs to our state coffer end up in Howard's account? May I call upon the Honourable Minister to enlighten us in this other house on this issue? Why Howard is allowed to keep the proceeds from the sales of logs? <coughs> Tuan Speaker, when Yang Ahmad Muhammad Chief Minister spoke sternly on illegal loggings, we look forward for him to carry out some serious action that he will take charge and lead to deal with illegal timber issue. However, 
after our young Ahmad Rahmat Chief Minister appointed the second Minister of Resource Planning and Environment to head the Anti-Logging Enforcement Committee to fight illegal loggings. We were shocked beyond words and lost confidence that the illegal problem will ever be tackled. During his tenure as the Minister in charge, illegal logging was rampant and now the young Ahmad Rahmat Chief Minister wants him to take charge again. I just don't understand. With the lousy track records of guarding our precious forests, in my view, the Honourable Member for Bukit Sari should be the last person to head the committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I call upon Yang Ahmad Brahmat Chief Minister to replace him with a more suitable person to take charge. Perhaps to replace him with Honourable Member for Sakok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sato, Sato. If Yang Ahmad Brahmat Chief Minister thinks that he is not the right candidate, Sato. maybe he can appoint Yang Ahmad uh, Honourable Member for Asajaya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. but I think, in my view, the best person to take the course will be our party chairman. Yeah, the honorary member for Kota Sintosa. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm sure with him heading the community, the community, our forest will be well protected. Yeah, we're serious. A change needs to be done fast before Sarawak Forest is all gone. Yeah. To give the forest ordinance more bites, we really need an honest tiger to guard the forest from within. Otherwise, with a toothless tiger heading the tormenty, no, for, no future forest ordinance will be of any use. Tuan Speaker, another way of tackling this crime, illegal logging, is to get people who know the jungle as well as the thieves to guard our forests. May I suggest our state government to revive the disbanded Sarawak Rangers, uh, Rangers. Uh, yeah. and the Border Scouts to assist in curbing illegal logging problem. To revive the Sarawak Rangers and the Border Scouts. Uh, yeah. To narrate a bit of history. As early as 1862, <coughs> The rangers were robbed in to help the Brutes family to quell the rebels. These brave Ibans, the Iban warriors, were again asked to help during the Malaysian-Indonesian confrontation in the 1960s mm. and to fight the communi communists in the 1948 in Malaya and then in the 70s. Mm. The British were impressed with the rangers and border mm. scouts for their bravery as it was well known that despite being fighting in the forefront, casualties were minimal. Mm. However, after the communists laid down their arms, these border scouts were absorbed into the general operation force, which is under the police force. Again, we lost something special that belongs to Sarawak. Mm. If they were maintained today, I believe the fight against the illegal immigrant and the illegal timber logging mm, would right. have been yeah. successful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sarawak Rangers, all the scouts, are our own people. Uh, they know the jungles well, including mm. all the jalan yes, yes, yes. They will be able to do a better right. job than the police right. and the relevant enforcement agencies. Mm -hmm. If our state could revive these Sarawak Rangers or border scouts, it will also give an opportunity to rural youngsters who are not interested in academic field. They could get a job in Sarawak without having to seek for work far away from home like in Johor or Singapore. This will help to open up job opportunity besides our state borders being well guarded. <coughs> we have already suffered too much brain drain and now human resources. Having said that, I hope that the state government will seriously look into these possibilities. The above 
is my observation on the first bill, 2015. Thank you. All right. All right. I rise to take part in this debate on the forest field 2015.